Hello and welcome to Craft with Sarah and day four of the Christmas Craft Countdown for 2021 where I'm revealing a new craft project every day for 20 days. Today's project is a gorgeous layered shadow box for Christmas. It shows a fireplace with a wonderful roaring log fire and then there's a Christmas tree and an armchair with a lovely little cat all having a snooze in front of the fire. What's special about this shadow box is it's been designed so that you can add the names of your family along the garlands across the top of the frame. But if you don't want to do that and you just want to make the frame as is, there is a version included without those garlands in too. So let's jump in and see how to get files to make this shadow box. First, you need to download the cutting file to make this project. If you aren't already signed up to the Christmas Craft Countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 2021 to join. If you have already purchased the countdown, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash login to log in to your account and access all of the Christmas Craft Countdown files. Once logged in, click into the Christmas Craft Countdown. Scroll down the page and all the files will become available on the date specified. The files do not expire so you can download them at any time. The files for this project are under the day 4 heading. After downloading the cutting files, you'll need to unzip the folder that they come in. If you aren't sure how to do that, check the link in the description of this video which contains instructions on how to unzip folders on Windows computers, Macs and Android and iPhone devices. There are three different versions of this shadow box included in the download folder. The first doesn't have any ribbons along the top so you can make this just as a standard shadow box without adding any customization. The second has one ribbon so that you could add your names along the top and this is the one I'm going to show you in the tutorial. And then the other one has two ribbons in case you have even more names that you'd like to add to the design. So I'm going to delete all of these and then show you how to upload the SVG files. I'll go into Upload and then Upload Image. Make sure you've downloaded the files from my website and unzipped the folder and then have a look at the file names which start SVG in the file name. And you'll see that there's three different ones. So they all contain the information about what type it is. So for example, in the file name will either be no ribbon, one ribbon or two ribbons. I'm using the one with one ribbon, so the file name I want is SVG Christmas Shadow Box One Ribbon. So I can drag and drop that in, and then it should look like this with all of the layers appearing on top of each other. If yours looks different and you can see all the layers next to each other instead of on top of each other, then that means you've accidentally uploaded the wrong file type. So if that's the case, click cancel down on the bottom right, and then try again and make sure you upload the one which starts SVG in the file name. When it's all looking like this, go ahead and click Upload. And then it will appear in your recent upload. So you can click on it and then press Add to Canvas. We're going to make it a bit bigger so it's easier to see to work with. Or you could zoom in using the buttons on the bottom left. I'm going to do all my customizations first and then I'll resize it to fit my shadow box at the end when I've added in my names. So what I'm going to do on here is add in the names of me and my husband along the top. So it'll say Sarah and James. But you could do whatever you want. You could add Merry Christmas, Season's Greetings, you could put your family name, your surname, um, or it could be the names of someone that you're going to give this to. So there are loads and loads of different possibilities. First, we need to hide all of the layers that are sitting on top of the ribbon. So let's have a look over here on the right hand side. And then all of these layers, you can see they have a little eye icon on the right of them. If I click the eye, it will hide that layer from view. It still exists on the project, but we won't be able to see it, which means it will be easier for us to work on that red layer with the ribbon on it. So I'm just going down all of these and then here is my red layer, I think. No, I've still got to go, that's a dark red. <laughs> Let's keep going, keep going. Okay, the fireplace is gone, that one's gone. And then here it is. Oh, I missed a little holly berry. Okay, so this one is actually the third one up from the very bottom and it's this red color here. So now I've got this, I'm also gonna hide the bottom two. 
And now what I need to do is ungroup everything because otherwise I won't be able to add the letters onto this whilst it's still in a group. To ungroup something, click the group name. So that'll be the file name that you've loaded in right at the top of the layers panel and then press ungroup. Next, we can start adding the word. So let's go into text and I'm gonna do this one letter at a time. So I'll start with the S. You want to choose a font that's quite nice and bold so that you'll be able to see the letters when they're all joined on. Cricut Sans, the default one it comes up with, actually is quite a good choice. But let's have a little look. I'm going to filter by Cricut fonts and just have a look and see if there's any ones in there that are even thicker that I think would look nice. Possibly that one. Mm, now I don't like that so much because the top of the letter is really narrow which means it will look funny when we try and add it onto the ribbon. This one is called BFC Santa's Candy. That's quite a uh, suitable name. Oh, but I don't like it. That's a funny shaped S. Choosing fonts is always time consuming. This one is called Bellwe Standard Medium. Oh, I quite like that. Okay, I think I'm going to go with that. All right, so let's let's zoom in a bit and then move this over. Make it a bit smaller. And then I'm just positioning it so that it's touching that red on there. Now I need to do the next letter. So let's right click and duplicate. I'll type out my A and then use the rotate buttons to move it so that it's just sitting. And I'm sorry if you can hear a weird buzzing noise. There's someone outside <laughs> cutting some bushes. So it's the machinery from that. It always seems to happen when I'm trying to record a video. If I'm not recording a video one day, it will be silent. And then as soon as I try and record, everyone decides to get all the noisy things out. So I'm just going through all of this one letter at a time. And the reason I'm doing it one letter at a time is so that you can rotate them to match the, um, the direction of the ribbon so it will sit nice. And I'm actually going to make this a bit smaller because otherwise I'm going to run out of space. So I have my H selected. I can press shift on the keyboard choose all of the other letters and then resize them together. And you really do want to make sure if you're resizing, you do it all as one because otherwise they'll all end up different sizes and it'll look a little bit weird. I'm also going to move this in a bit and just play around with the rotation again now that I've moved it. There we go. So I've left a little space over here on the left and that is because I'm going to add a star in there. You could also add a heart, so it's up to you. Actually, I think a heart would be nicer because this is kind of a family frame. So I'm going to go into shapes and choose a heart and then add that on. You might not be able to tell it's a heart actually because you'll cut the top off. So I think I will actually go for a star. The reason that I'm going to add in some stars is that these are a nice solid shape that we can then fit some foam pads behind when we stick this layer into the shadow box and adding in some foam pads along the ribbon will make it stand out better, be more stable and overall just look better in the frame. So I would highly recommend adding some shapes in and I'm going to do stars. There's a nice solid gap in the middle that I'll be able to fit my foam pads in. I think I just moved my base layer so I'm just going to undo that. Yeah I did. <laughs> okay so now I can add James on the other side which is the name of my husband. So I'm just doing exactly the same thing. That J looks smaller than the other letters, but I think it's just a trick of the eye. You can also press Ctrl and C on your keyboard to copy and then Ctrl and V to paste. 
rather than having to right click and um, press duplicate all the time. So that's what I'm doing here just to speed it up a little bit. Oops, moved it. If you do move it, you can either click undo up here on the left or press control and Z on your keyboard and that will also undo the change you've just done. Okay, I can copy that S just to make it a bit quicker. And then one more star on the other side so that I can put another foam pad in there. So we can't put it under the letters because they're just too thin. I think it would be too thin to cut the foam pads that size. There's now a motorbike outside. I'm not having much luck with it being nice and quiet today. Okay, there we go. Now to get a better idea of how this is going to look once we've actually welded it to the red layer so that it will all cut out as one, I'm going to make all of the letters into the same red colour. To do that, click one of the layers in the layers panel, press shift and hold it down on your keyboard and then go and click all of the letters. And for some reason it keeps flicking me up to the top when I try that. I don't know why it's doing that, I think it's just some design space funkiness. But now I've got those all selected, I'm going to go ahead and press group. And now, because it's in a group, I can click that group title where it says group, go into the colours, choose my red, and it will change it all at the same time. So it's just a really nice quick way to do it. Finally, I'm going to click on the group and go arrange centre back. And this is now going to give us a really good idea of how this will look once we've joined the words to the ribbon. Because now you can't see the tops of the letters. So we can have a little play and decide if you want to move any of it. So if you do, then you'll need to ungroup it again, which will um, mean we can now move each part. You might find that you can't actually click on the letters because it will try and get the layer which is at the front, which is now the main red layer. So what you can do instead is click the layers on um, layers panel and then try and move it with your arrow keys. But that tends to move it quite a lot at once. So it's not always ideal. What you might have to do is just click that outline, get arrange, center back which will put the letters at the front again. So now you can move them around however you want to. I'll just shift a few of these. And then when you think you're happy again, regroup them either by clicking with the shift held down in the layers panel or um, clicking them in the actual picture. But as you can see, that's not the easiest way to do it because I keep shifting them by mistake. So I'm going to do it in the layers all of these letters, group them again, send them to the back and then have a look. I think that's looking pretty good. I'm happy with how that is. You need to make sure your letters are touching the, the ribbon, otherwise they'll just fall apart when you try and cut it. So when you're happy with how it's looking, scroll down in the layers panel, click on your group of all of the letters Press shift and choose the red layer, the outline layer, and then down the bottom of the layers panel, press weld. Now, once you've pressed weld, it would join all of this together. So now this is just one layer, which means if we wanted to change the text or move any of the letters now, we wouldn't be able to. The only way to do it is to click undo to undo that weld. But if you save your project, close design space and come back to it another time. Because you've welded those letters, it means you won't be able to change them again. So just bear that in mind before you weld. You might want to save one version of your project before you weld it and then save it as a different file name after you have welded it. Then if you ever want to come back to it and change it in the future, you have got that original one that you could change. And I'm happy with this. So let's go ahead and just turn all those other layers back on. So I'm clicking the eye next to them and we can't see them at the moment because when we welded that red layer, it moved it to the top in the layers panel. So we'll just need to put it back into position. There we go. Okay, so it's at the top now, 
I think the easiest way to do this will be to go arrange center back and then it will be all the way at the bottom and I can just drag it up to and now that's sitting where it actually will go. So if we zoom out again, there we are. That's looking really, really pretty. I love it. This now needs resizing to fit the shadow box. So press select all along the top and then press group at the top of the layers panel. And now we can resize this and everything will change in proportion. Let's go ahead and measure the shadow box frame to see how big to make this. Here's my shadow box and I'm going to take off the back. So I've already peeled up the little tabs and then take out the spacer. And this is what I'll measure. The shadow box I'm using is from Hobbycraft, which is a UK craft store. And it's the 15 by 15 centimeter one, but it doesn't matter what shadow box you use. As long as it's square, then you're good to go. So here's the spacer and to know what size to make the design in design space, we want to measure from one edge all the way to the other. So we're going from the outside of that wooden spacer to the other. And for me, that is 6.5 inches. My spacer was 6.5 inches. So I'm going to click the design. Make sure the padlock icon above the width and the height boxes is closed. And then type 6.5 in the width, press enter on the keyboard and the height will change as well. So now this is all ready for me to cut out. Click make it on the top right and this will split everything out into all of the different colors. I'm going to be using A4 paper so I need to change all of these one color at a time to A4. For the really little bits that only have a little tiny bit I will probably end up using some of my card scraps for that. I love with these layered designs when you have got a little piece that only needs a little bit of one specific color you can use your scraps for that. And I'm just changing all of these. For these little berries in the holly, I'm going to drag them inside the frame so that they can cut from that space. Then that saves me that strip, which I could use another time. That one I'll use a scrap piece of orange for. So just a little off cut from another project. And yeah, so I'm just going to keep going and I'll drag those in there as well. Actually, I think they'd probably be better there because that's quite a big bit of card that I'll have left over so I could use that for another project and nearly done just a couple more so you can see all of the colors that you're going to need and then finally just that with just these little tiny pieces okay so when you finish changing all the paper sizes click continue that'll connect to your Cricut machine and then just follow the instructions on screen to cut everything out from your different colors of cardstock. And then I'll show you how to stick it all together and put it inside the frame. Here are all of my pieces cut out and I've just led them one on top of the other to check that I'm happy with all of the colors and everything. I have glued on a couple of the smaller details already, such as the flames on the candles and the holly leaves and berries, just so that I didn't lose them between cutting it out and actually bringing it into my recording room to film the video. So now that I'm happy with everything, I'm going to pull it all apart and start sticking it together. These are the bottom two layers, which make the wallpaper design and also the carpet down the bottom. And for these ones, I'm going to glue them. The glue I like to use for paper craft projects is called Kalal. It's a really good glue because it doesn't bend or warp the cardstock like some other glues can do. And I put it into these tiny needle tip applicator bottles, which means I can get the glue into all of the tiny spaces in my cardstock. So I'm going to turn this upside down and add some glue. You want to make sure you get a good stick on this as it's the bottom layers so it's going to have the weight of all of the other pieces of cardstock on top of it. So if you can, try and get down all of these little um, stripes on the wallpaper. And then a nice bit along that bottom. And then simply glue it on top 
of the base piece. There we go. Okay. The next piece is the one with the name on it. Just trying to pick it up. <laughs> this piece here. And you can see I've already glued on these little flames on the candles. But this one's going to go on top and we're going to use 3D foam pads to raise it out a bit to be the first layer of that shadow box. So let's turn it upside down and I'll bring in my foam squares. I'm using these ones from Dot and Dab, but you can use any different ones, it doesn't matter. And we're going to add these onto the back. Now when you're adding foam squares to shadow boxes, you want to add a good amount along all of these edges to give it a really good stick, because if you don't, if you maybe only put one in each of the corners, then you'll find that the edges will sag under the weight of the cardstock and it will kind of droop down and it just won't look as good. So we need to add a fair few foam pads alongside all these edges to give it stability and make it really sturdy and make it so that it won't droop down. As well as putting them around the edge, put them into any large spaces that we've got here. So I'm putting mine in the middle of the back of the fireplace. And again, not just around the edge of that fireplace, but some in the middle too. Also going to go along the top. You in here, make sure you don't go over any of the edges. Otherwise, you'll be able to see the foam when you turn it over. And then, because we don't want our hanging piece to droop down, we're going to add some foam to the back of those stars. And they're actually a bit too small for my foam pads. So let's just take a pair of scissors and cut them in half. Because if the foam goes over the edge, as I just said, you'll be able to see it, which we don't want. And these stars with the foam is going to let that banner, that ribbon, um, stand up properly and not droop in the middle. And if you've cut your foam small enough, you could even put some into the ribbon itself and that will give it even more stability and just make sure that that long piece of cardstock doesn't droop down. I will put a little bit in. Oh, that was upside down. So it had the paper on the bottom. Just a bit in there. But putting it in the ribbon itself is, you know, optional because it is really thin. So it might be hard to cut that small. Once you've got all your foam pads on, peel the tops off to release all of the stickiness. Now I can line this up and stick it down. So I'm going to line it up along one of the edges and then gently lie it on top. And that's going to let me check I've got this lined up because you do want to be really precise with this shadow box layers, otherwise it's not going to fit into your frame at the end. So because you've just let it down, if it wasn't quite lined up, then you could pick it up again and reposition it. I'm happy with that, so I'm going to push down to stick all of those bits of foam. And I'm not sure if you can really see, but because we've got the foam under the ribbon, it's standing up really nicely all the way across, and it's not doing any drooping <laughs> in the middle. At this point, if you haven't already, glue on the little flames on the candles, and then we can move on to the next layer, which is this red one here. And this one creates the fancy brickwork in the fireplace and we're going to glue it this time. Turn it over. Make sure you put some glue into the little pieces of holly. And then we can stick this over the top. And again, be careful with your edges to make sure it's all lined up. Next we have the white layer 
Well, and this is where things start to get a little bit more exciting because we have all of these extra pieces. I've realised I've just put them out of shot of the camera. That wasn't very helpful, was it? <laughs> I'll move them down here instead. Uh, here we go. Alrighty. So I've already glued on some of these bits. I've put on the green holly and the red berries and then the two pieces of the clock. And that's all glued on there. And then for the actual layer which goes on here, this will be one we'll use our foam pads for. Turn it around. I've peeled the tops off so I can stick this on top of what's already there. And again, I'm going to line it up along the edge and then just drop it down before pushing everything else down. And now we can put on these other bits of detail. To start with, I'm going to glue the coloured bits of the stockings to the white pieces underneath. I've got a green stocking and a red one. Let's do these one at a time. <laughs> these are really small, they're a little bit fiddly. There we go. All right, now we can start adding some of these on and I'm going to use 3D foam pads for the stockings. So turn it upside down and I think just two little pads on that one will be fine. The green one over here. And the red one, oops, just bend that a little bit. The red one on the other side. There, let's pull this down so you can actually see it a little bit better. Um, and then we have the top of the surround. So it's up to you how you do this. You can either stick it on top of the tops of these, uh, whatchamacallem, stockings, or you can slide it underneath. And if you're going to put it underneath, it actually would have been easier to stick that on first. Um, I should have done that. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to add some foam on here and I think I'll put mine underneath so it's just dog hair stuck in there not sure how that happened slide that underneath the tops of the stockings and then just push it down in place and that's just to create that extra depth above the clock and things and then the same with the flames and the um, the uh, bottom surround. For the flames, I think I will um, glue on the orange part and then foam the yellow. But you could foam both pieces if you wanted to really make it stand out. There's that bit. And then I'll add a teeny bit of foam in the middle of the yellow piece. Stick that in the middle. And then the bottom bit covers up the base of those flames. So don't put any foam pads right in the middle, otherwise it will get in the way of that yellow frame. And if you've used... Um, two layers of foam for the flames then I'd actually recommend moving the yellow bit further up otherwise this isn't going to sit level. I've actually put the foam on the wrong side of that because I've got the uh, pattern on the hammered effect card on the other side so let's just switch that round quick switcheroo try that again Foam pads aren't very sticky now because I moved them. There we go, that's that base of the fireplace done. The next layer makes up the armchair in that bottom. And for this one, we're going to use foam pads. So just make sure 
that you don't put any foam where you've got the um, bottom bit of that rectangle piece. So I'm going to avoid that area, but put the foam pads everywhere else. Here are my foam pants and I've peeled the backs off already so I can stick this one on top. And this is going to add in all of that detail to the armchair and you see I've gone over that rectangle and also over the edge of that red stocking. Now let's add some lights to the Christmas tree with our yellow layer and this will be another foam one. This does need quite a lot of foam pads for this particular shadow box, but it's worth it with all of the layers as it looks really, really pretty when it's all finished. Pick this one up and line it up and stick down. Next I'm going to put the cat on and that will be done with some 3D foam pads to make it stand out from the armchair. I'm slightly running out of foam pads, I'm going to have to run and get another pack. So you can line it up with where the ear and the head are on there. There we go. We've got two layers left, which are our Christmas trees. For the next one, this one will be glued and that's because the gaps in the tree are quite small. So if we were to foam this, then the shadows that will naturally appear kind of take away from all of the yellow and it will just look gray through the gap instead with the shadows. And we want that nice bright yellow. So glue on the back of this one. Line that up. It's stuck down. And then there's one layer left, which is the detail on top of the Christmas tree. And for this one, it's up to you which one you choose. You can either glue it or you can use foam. I think I am going to use foam. I want that extra one extra layer. But this is quite a tricky one to add foam to as it's so thin and narrow everywhere. And we are going to have to cut the foam small enough to fit inside those bits, bits of the tree. So um, if it's easier for you to glue it, then by all means do that. It will still look really, really lovely. I'll start by adding all the bits of foam to the outside. And then I'll take a look at putting some smaller pieces on the inside of that tree. Here are some pieces that I've cut very, very small, which is left over from where we were doing the uh, ribbon at the start. Just place all these in here, being careful not to um, have any foam that will show through from the other side. And I'm actually cutting this shadow box quite small really to go in my frame. If you're doing it bigger, then it will just naturally be thicker, these parts, so it'll be a little bit easier. There we go, I think I want one more bit in that big section that I've missed. There we go. Okay, now, <laughs> now I need to try and peel all these tops off of these tiny little pieces of foam. This may take just a little minute. <laughs> okay, I think that's all of them. So add the final layer. Awesome. That looks really, really good with all of those layers in. See them all there? And it's time to go in the frame.
Here's my frame and I've taken the glass out of mine just because otherwise all you'll see is the reflection of my camera lights in there. But you would have your glass in here. And then there are a couple of different ways that you can frame it. So you could keep your spacer in there and then add your layers on the back. And depending on how many layers you've added and how thick your foam pads are, that might be okay, but you can see for mine, that's actually gonna to be too thick. And I could push it down, but if you push it down and squidge it in, it squishes all the foam up, so you lose the dimension. So that might work for you, depending on the thickness of your frame and how many layers you've done. But for me, that's not gonna work, so I need to remove the spacer. The second way to do it is to then just put your design in as is and then put the back on and close it all up. But that was probably gonna leave a lot of space. You can see there's a lot of gap in there and it means that the design will sit really far back in your frame and it's just not very stable. It's a bit wibbly wobbly. What you can do instead to give it a little bit of extra depth is, take that out, Add either some blue tack or some foam pads, which is what I'm going to do, foam pads, inside the frame to kind of add a little bit of extra space in there. And that will put the shadow box backwards a bit. So if you've got the glass in there, you'd be sticking this to the glass. And I'm just going to make a little tower of foam. Sure, it's going to be easier to stick it together <laughs> before I put it in the frame. So here's one piece of my foam and then you can decide how many you think you're going to need. I reckon three probably. And as I said if you're putting the glass in your glass would be in and you put this on top of the glass. Now I can stick that in side, making sure it's all covered by the frame. This isn't sticking very well. I'll probably need to add some, maybe some glue. I think it would stick better if I was putting it on the glass. I'll give it a try, but um, really that needs to be cleaned, it's filthy. <laughs> There you go, so that will stick better. And actually it's not as reflective as I thought it would be, so that's a bonus. And then do the same for each of the four corners and also one bit in the middle. So I'll just show you one more. Stacking three bits of foam on top of each other. And then I'll put this one just in the middle here right up against the edge because we don't want to be able to see it and then you do the same for the rest of it and then I'll show you how we put it all together. I've now got all my little piles of foam inside the frame so this time when I drop this in it's not going to go all the way down to the glass it's going to sit on top of those um, pieces of foam which is going to push it away from the back of the frame a little bit or the front of the frame actually. So now when I put the back in, if I can get it past those little metal things that always annoy me, there we go. Now it's actually sitting where it's supposed to go. So when we close it, it's all gonna be nice and firm and stable and you still get all of those layers. I've actually messed up my foam pads a bit along the edge because I can see them in a couple of places. So I need to have a little play about to make sure I can't see them anymore. But there we go, that is our finished shadow box looking absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to make your very own layered shadow box for Christmas. This is a lovely design and I think it would be really nice to bring out year after year with all the names of your family along the top. Don't forget to get the files, go to craftwithsarah.com forward slash Christmas 2021. I'll be back tomorrow with a brand new Christmas craft project, but until then, 
Thank you for watching. Bye.